If I told you that the 23rd most richest person in the world, billionaire status, has never spent a single dollar, would you believe me? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. What's up guys, this is Jesse with Keeping It Real Finance, the channel that always has your back and tells it like it is. Today we are going to be talking about the fabulous, unrealized fortune of Satoshi Nakamoto. This is the founder of Bitcoin. I don't know if you've ever heard of this person, and I frankly don't know if this person even exists, but we're going to be talking about it in this video. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this one. This is a mystery on a colossal scale. So with that, if you're a first time viewer, make sure to hit the subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications, and as always, hit that like button if you enjoy today's content. All right, now let's get it going. So I just read an article published yesterday titled, How many Bitcoin does its inventor Satoshi Nakamoto still own by Daniel Phillips of Decrypt.co? Hmm, okay. So it goes on to say, he still holds a massive stash of Bitcoin that's never been moved, indicating a careful and benevolent designer. What? <laughs> what do you mean it's never been moved? The, the plot thickens, all right? So what are the facts? The facts are, in the first seven months of Bitcoin's existence, roughly January to July of 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto mined as many as 1.1 million Bitcoin. That's a lot of Bitcoin, folks. And today's value at roughly $32,000 per Bitcoin, obviously this number keeps fluctuating, 1.1 million coins would have a value in excess of 35 billion dollars. Cha-ching. <laughs> all right, so now all of the 1.1 million coins have never been touched, believe it or not. Now to date, Satoshi Nakamoto remains anonymous and has never been fully identified, though suspicions are he is potentially a British citizen due to the times he was active and posting, as well as the original white paper is written in a British English. The account has been dark since roughly 2009, 2011. So it's been dark for nearly a decade, okay? So when it all started, Nakamoto benefited from doing all the mining himself and earning up to 50 Bitcoin per mine block, okay? So this is also back when you could do this on a single computer. So this didn't take the colossal computing power that it does today with these sweatshops that have all these processors and things going at the same time. Back then you could do it with a single computer, uh, which is just crazy. So a 1.1 million coin estimate that he mined. So per the article, in his report titled, The Well-Deserved Fortune, of Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin creator and genius, researcher Sergio Demian Lerner looked at blocks mined between January 1st, 2009 and January 25th, 2010. Okay, so this is blocks one through 36,288 in an attempt to identify which were mined by the same entity. All right. So by doing so, Lerner found that a single entity using a single mining rig, meaning one computer, mined thousands of blocks between this time and racked up around 1 million Bitcoin in block rewards while doing so. Holy cow. Lerner coined this pattern of early mining the, quote, Patoshi pattern. All right. So since the pattern begins with the Genesis block, this is block number one mined from Bitcoin. It's assumed this was done by Nakamoto himself. So this person mined roughly 22,000 blocks themselves. So it's almost like an insurance plan where they mined all this themselves so that one day, who knows, maybe it'll be worth something, maybe not, but they did it all themselves up to 22,000 blocks, all right? Now, debunked claim of 50, 50 moved Bitcoin. So it was recently alleged that 50 of the original coins were finally moved. 
However, <laughs> it was later determined that these 50 Bitcoins that were moved were outside of the Patoshi pattern, meaning they were done by someone else. So they were by one of the original people involved there in Bitcoin, but it was not Satoshi Nakamoto. It was somebody else who moved those 50 coins. So they still haven't been touched, folks. So, so far, numerous people have claimed publicly to be Nakamoto, including Craig Wright. So he's an Australian tech entrepreneur, and he's been accused of stealing $5 billion in Bitcoin from his late business partners, so that's great. A couple other names that have shown up, George Malt, Bilal Khalid, uh, Debo Guidos, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, Others who have been supposedly outed, so th those four have claimed it themselves. Others who have been supposedly outed, number one, and this is the image that you see in the thumbnail, Dorian Nakamoto. So he was outed by Newsweek due to his name and engineering background. He vehemently denied it. Now, during the outing, they actually revealed his house that people could find, so his privacy was completely annihilated. So because the Bitcoin community was so outraged when this occurred, they actually had a fundraiser and raised 100 Bitcoin for Dorian Nakamoto. So, so that's pretty awesome. So you got to think, you know, valued today to $32,000 times 100 Bitcoin, he isn't doing too bad himself. All right. Now, the other person who has been outed, and this is a potential as well, is Nick Zabo. So who's Nick Zappa? Well, he pioneered the concept of smart contracts in a 1996 paper. In 2008, he conceptualized a decentralized currency he called BitGold. <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, author Dominic Frisbee, uh, he's the one who outed Nick Zabo in his book, Bitcoin, The Future of Money. Uh, by the way, link down below if you want to check that out. Uh, Frisbee found Sabo had a similar writing style to Nakamoto, and he had that tested, okay? Uh, they both referenced economist Carl Menger, and Sabo worked for DigiCash in an early attempt to bring uh, crypto cryptography to digital payments. So, he might be our closest lead yet. Now, this story wouldn't be... Uh, as awesome as it is without the introduction of a somewhat genius slash crackpot. He toes a fine line here and who am I talking about? None other than John McAfee of McAfee Antivirus Software. <laughs> so for those of you out there who haven't seen the Netflix documentary on John McAfee, highly recommend it. There's a few surprises in there that you won't see coming that, whoa, McAfee is a intense uh, different genius. He's kind of that guy that if you think of the spectrum as a circle, you know, somebody whose baseline's up top, he kind of goes all the way down to genius, and sometimes he crosses that into straight up crazy land. <laughs> so, here's what McAfee's saying, okay? It was a team of 11 people over a period of five years. He thinks Craig Wright was involved, okay? McAfee cited language quirks in the original white paper attributed to British English. Now, here's a couple quotes from McAfee. These are interesting. So he says, quote, If you buy a $200 authorship program and you take the white paper and you run it through and you take any one of the papers that he's published, all these people wrote papers, by the way, only one comes out with 99% probability it's him. Interesting. He also goes on to say, I have spoken to him on the phone. I was actually going to divulge who he was until the author convinced him not to reveal it. Well, that's something. So to date, just so you all know out there, none of these people have been able to definitively prove that they have the keys to the addresses thought to be owned by Satoshi Nakamoto. All right. So. I see two scenarios that Nakamoto either can't or is purposefully not claiming the coins. So in the scenario that Satoshi Nakamoto cannot claim these coins, the reasons are, here we go, uh, Nakamoto's dead, 
maybe this person died, right? The account went dark roughly 2009, 2011-ish. It's been dark for, you know, roughly 10 years, okay? Uh, perhaps he doesn't have or cannot get access to the coins. So what if Nakamoto is in prison? Hmm? Well, that's interesting. Uh, the idea of Nakamoto losing access seems like a stretch. So if this person was smart enough to come up with Bitcoin and these crazy numbers and all these algorithms, how would they lose their passwords? That, that's just not that. So in the scenario that they can't get access, dead, in jail, who knows? Somewhere along those lines, right? Now, if we take the other path and we say, well, this person purposefully is not claiming the Bitcoin, why would they not claim $35 billion, right? So reason one for not claiming the Bitcoin. Uh, number one, he'd be an instant target. Target by criminals, target by governments, target by everybody. Basically, everybody would be targeting this person. This is what happened to Dorian Nakamoto. This is why the Bitcoin community felt bad for him, okay? So they would be an instant target. You know, if, if you suddenly, you know, think about somebody winning Powerball. A lot of times they want to remain anonymous. They don't want anybody to know who they are. Some states try and force them out into the public to get in the public view. Ways around this, you know, you, you file different LLCs, you move the money around, you have an attorney pick up the check, etc. cetera. Uh, they do not want to be out in the public. They do not want to be a target, right? So number two, along with that, is their anonymity would be removed. So he would go from the shadows to a worldwide platform. That's quite a leap, right? Now, reason number three, he doesn't need the money. What if he doesn't need the money at all? So he's not taking it. Reason number four, he doesn't want the money. Maybe he just doesn't want it. Reason number five, he knows the longer he holds, the higher the value. Therefore, he'll never sell them. Reason number six, he has a greater purpose for them. Something beyond what we've thought of. Or reason number seven, he's more than one person. Hmm. <laughs> So I do know that if he went public today, this is the funny part, he would fall right behind Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, uh, Mackenzie Scott. She has 36 billion, by the way, as the 23rd richest billionaire in the world. <laughs> so yeah, hey, you're still behind Bezos' ex-wife, sorry. Uh, but that being said, uh, you're, you're right up there in the stratosphere, right? So the, the bottom line here with this whole story is I find this absolutely fascinating. Uh, it, it reminds me of the, a show that I've been watching a lot on the History Channel, History's Greatest Mysteries, where they try and solve things like this. This could easily be an episode that could take up multiple hours trying to figure out who is Satoshi Nakamoto. They're sitting on a colossal fortune and not doing anything with it. You know, the, the people that have claimed they're Satoshi, well, if you're Satoshi, then why didn't you go ahead and take that money? It's because they're probably not, right? So whoever Satoshi actually is, most likely British, due to the posting times, most likely British, due to the white paper. Apparently, McAfee may know who it is. I don't know. Uh, but th this person has continued to remain anonymous today. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Nobody has cracked this story yet. So maybe somebody out there will crack it, or maybe they will put an episode on on this regarding who exactly is Satoshi Nakamoto. But the bottom line is Nakamoto is sitting on a colossal fortune that is only going to go up and up in value. In recent videos, you've probably seen across YouTube, my prior video, you know, we talked about how Bitcoin could go up and above and beyond $500,000. There's a lot of people who believe in this. In fact, even our boy John McAfee said he would eat his own <laughs> if it didn't hit 500,000. He later, later <laughs> reneged on that, so. <laughs> He's, he's apparently not going to do that. But even McAfee thinks 500,000 is possible. So with that, that is today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you got some ideas on who uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is, you know, leave it in the comments, you know. I, I, I love a good mystery, and eventually someone will solve who Nakamoto is. Maybe we just need to get this on history's greatest mysteries, folks. So 
maybe we need a little petition out there, you know, petition.org to the History Channel for them to take this one up. Because uh, somebody needs to know who this billionaire is. $35 billion, give or take, it fluctuates. Could be even higher. In the next 10 years, this could be quote unquote, the richest person in the world who is 100% anonymous. All right, so as always folks, this is Jesse with Keeping It Real and I will see you next time. Later.